Hi LEGO fans, with the second Fantastic Beasts movie, The Crimes of Grindelwald, scheduled for release on November 16th, LEGO has just released two new Fantastic Beasts themed sets. I've already reviewed set number 75951, Grindelwald's Escape, and today I'm going to be unboxing, speed building, and reviewing the one everybody wants to see, 75952, Newt's Case of Magical Creatures from LEGO Fantastic Beasts. This is a 694 piece set based on the magical suitcase carried by Newton Scamander in the original Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find the movie. It's a really innovative build that can be unfolded to reveal the expanded magical universe within. And we also get a bunch of magical creatures. The part count includes four minifigures. From left to right, we've got Queenie Goldstein, Newt Scamander, Tina Goldstein, and Jacob Kowalski. Flipping over to the back of the box, we get a much clearer view of what's inside. We start out with a brick-built recreation of Newt Scamander's suitcase. In a feat of epic LEGO engineering, this opens up and unfolds to reveal the magically expanded universe within. That is so cool! Among the magical creatures included in the set, we have an Okami complete with Okami Egg. We also have a Thunderbird, a buildable Irumpunt, and everybody's favourite lover of shiny things, a Niffler. There's also a buildable bow truckle which just looks like a bunch of plant elements thrown together. Also inside Newt's case we've got a small garden where he seems to be nurturing a new batch of bow truckles and you can see where Niffler's hidden some of his shiny things. There's a small kitchen area for preparing food for the Fantastic Beasts and a doorway leading out into the magically expanded world beyond the suitcase. Although the Grindelwald's escape set was very cool, this is the one I'm really looking forward to. So let's cut to the chase, get this box open and see what we've got inside. Here's everything that came inside the box. We've got four numbered bags of Lego. A separate wing for the Thunderbird that Lego forgot to put in bag one for some reason. Two instruction manuals. And a small but banged up sticker sheet. I'm going to go ahead and build Newt's case of magical creatures and today this is going to be a 90 second speed build. And here's a completed build. Build time was about an hour and 20 minutes and this set looks amazing. Of course it would be impossible for LEGO to include all of the Fantastic Beasts with this set and there's one in particular that I would really like to see here and that's the Demi Guys. That's the kind of pale ape-like creature and it would have been amazing if LEGO could have included it in this set. It would have been a real challenge to recreate the fur but I guess they could have done it with a maxi figure. Demi guys apart, this is a fantastic looking set and has some really cool fantastic beasts. We're going to take a look at those first, then we're going to take a look around the magically expanded suitcase and we're going to finish up with those minifigures. First up we have the Arumpant, a huge African magical beast. Clearly resembling a rhinoceros, this is a hugely powerful creature with a thick hide capable of repelling most curses and charms. It has a very long horn which is used to inject a deadly fluid that causes things to explode. Famously, Xenophilius Lovegood had one of these horns in his home. Except, of course, Xenophilius thought it came from the crumpled horn Snorkak. In fact, it was probably the rumpant horn that caused Luna Lovegood's home to explode when attacked by Death Eaters. 
The horn itself is quite an interesting element and it's actually hollow and made of very rubbery plastic. You can see it's just got this small peg here which sticks into the top of the rumpant's head. The head is mounted on a ball joint which gives it a good degree of articulation. You can see the deadly liquid stored on top of the rumpant's head and represented by transparent orange bricks. We get some really nice round custom printed elements for the rumpant's eyes. The rumpant is described as having a roundish body and it certainly looked like an overweight rhinoceros in the Fantastic Beasts movie. Clearly that's quite difficult to recreate in Lego but I think they've done quite a good job with the rounded slopes on top of the rumpant. And the body is well articulated with the legs pivoting at the hips and at the knees. Although they do look a little bit spindly. The front legs only move from side to side like this and I thought it was quite interesting that Lego had actually used a ball joint in here even though we only have forward and backward movement. The rear legs have the same planes of articulation but are attached somewhat more predictably with a fastener. The next creature from Newton Scamander's Menagerie of Fantastic Beasts is the Thunderbird. This is a large avian creature native to North America and most commonly found in Arizona. The Thunderbird can create storms as it flies and it's highly sensitive to danger. There's also a house at Ilvermorny School of Witchcraft and Wizardry aka American Hogwarts that's named after this bird. The colour scheme used to create the Thunderbird is simply stunning. We've got lots of gold, lots of sand colours and lots of white. The head comes in two pieces with an opening beak and some really nice printing. I love the printing here for the eyes with many colours and the gold detailing on the end there for the beak. The head is mounted onto the body using a ball joint and that gives it quite a nice degree of articulation and poseability. The wings are really nice elements, dual moulded from white and gold plastic. Although I'm pretty sure this colourway is exclusive, these are not new moulds. The same elements in two-tone brown can be found on the Great Eagle which came with the Tower of Orthanc, one of the Lord of the Rings sets. Down at the feet we've got even more gold with golden talons. And adding to the colour theme we've got golden ingots on each leg. Those legs also have multiple points of articulation with ball jointed knees and ball jointed hips. Inevitably we do have some sticker detail on the back for the feathers but then we get some really nice elements making up the tail with these long golden pieces topped off with small wing elements. There's even another pair of those at the base of the tail. This is such a nice build and a really good recreation of the Thunderbird we saw in the movie. The next creature looks like it might belong in a Lego elf set but this is of course the Okami, a winged serpentine beast native to Asia. Typically an Okami will grow to about 15 feet in height but it's also known to be Coronaptixic meaning it can grow or shrink in order to fill available space. That's how Tina and Newt were able to capture one of these in a teapot. To create the serpentine like body Lego have used seven different ball joints. Each segment is made up of several elements and the use of one by one modified studs and cheese slopes really help to give it a kind of scaly look. They are actually really faithful to illustrations that I've seen of Okami's. The head uses exactly the same pieces as the Thunderbird. But clearly we've got some different printing here and this looks awesome. It looks like we've got about four different colours in the head print including a really nice metallic detail. And the eye printing is super crisp with a little speck of light and really brings the Okami to life. And of course we can't talk about Fantastic Beasts without looking at this little guy. This is of course a Niffler, he is native to Great Britain and he's well known for stealing shiny things. Being a magical creature native to Great Britain, Nifflers were covered in the Care of Magical Creatures class in the third year of Hogwarts. Nifflers are also assigned to Curse Breakers by the Gringotts Head Goblin. They're used to burrow underground in search of treasures hidden in cursed sites. Niffler is dual moulded from two different colours of plastic and we've got a tiny amount of printing there for the eyes. He just looks awesome and I really like this little guy. And the final magical creature in this set is the bow truckle and I know we are meant to get a buildable bow truckle in this set. I'm not certain this is it and certainly in my mind this does not look like a bow truckle but we've certainly got a random collection of plant elements here. Because it's not exactly clear whether this is a bow truckle or not, I may just choose to substitute the bow truckle with baby Groot for the rest of the video. Beyond the really cool creatures we get with this set, we also have this magnificent suitcase. Newt Scamander is a magizoologist and this is his magical suitcase which contains an expanded world to keep his creatures. He did this using an undetectable extension charm, much like the one Hermione used on her bag in the Deathly Hallows. The suitcase has some really nice details including the protected corners, realistic looking hinges, golden clasps and a muggle worthy switch. If Newt finds himself in a situation where a muggle wants to look inside his bag he simply flicks the muggle worthy switch and it appears like a normal suitcase when they open it up. 
Newt's case is also monogrammed with the initials NS for Newton Scamander, and there's a handle on top, although this does look way too small for a human hand. But by far the coolest thing about Newton Scamander's case is that it can be unfolded to reveal the expanded magical universe within. The inside of Newt's case is broken up into several different areas and habitats. In this part of the case we've got what looks like a food preparation area complete with sink and golden faucet. We've also got a meat cleaver he might use to prepare food for the Okami, and a hairbrush which might be used for grooming the demi guys that we don't get. The mountain in the corner is a little bit more difficult to explain. This might be a mountain for the moon calves, or it could be a recreation of the Thunderbirds Arizona desert home. The other side seems to contain multiple habitats and features. We've got somewhere to hide all of Niffler's shiny things. There's also a nest complete with an Okami egg, although this is white and not the soft and pure silver we would see. I'm a really big fan of the element they used to create the Okami's nest. Clearly this was designed to be used with a minifigure and it's so cool. As well as the Okami nest we also have some round tiles which make this look like a riverbed. And rising up out of the riverbed we've got some kind of tree. At first I thought this might be somewhere for Newt to grow bow truckles, but it could also be somewhere for growing bamboo for the Okami's. Or perhaps this is a habitat for bow truckles and over here is where Newt grows bamboo. In the centre of Newt's suitcase is a ladder that folds up. And of course this provides a way for Newt and his guests to climb down into the magically expanded world. At the bottom of the ladder we've got Newt's shed. This resembles what I would call a potting shed. Inside Newt has a portrait of a very good friend from Hogwarts. This is Lita Lestrange. Hopefully I'm not giving away any spoilers but I know that Lita and Newt were very very close friends at Hogwarts and that friendship ceased when an experiment went badly wrong and Newt took the blame. Hopefully we'll find out a little bit more about Lita in the upcoming movie. Newt also keeps his beloved books in his shed, including a copy of Bestiarium Magicum and other Magizoology books. We don't really get a sense of that in this Lego build, but we do see a couple of potion bottles which might just contain Beak Balm and Shell Shiner. Beyond the doors of the shed is where one would step out into the magically expanded universe beyond. Lego kind of leaves this to the imagination, but you can imagine there being a large grassland beyond for the Arumpet to roam. So that was Newt's case and the slightly abbreviated collection of magical creatures within. So far I'm really impressed with this set, but that is not all. Oh no, that is not all. We also have four minifigures. From left to right we've got Queenie Goldstein, Tina Goldstein, Newt Scamander and Jacob Kowalski. This is Queenie Goldstein, younger sister of Tina, and she attended Ilva Morning School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. She was sorted into Puckwudgy House, and after leaving she got a desk job within the Magical Congress of the United States of America, issuing wand permits. She is also a very accomplished Legilimens, which basically means she can see into other people's minds, a little bit like Snape was doing with Harry Potter in one of the movies. The outfit she's wearing is interesting to say the least and she looks like she's dressed for bed. We've got a torso piece here which is over printed in lots of shades of pink and we've got these pink legs which are also printed with flesh colour on here and some more detailing. So we've got some really really nice overlaid printing there with some pearlescence which really kind of show the texture in the I guess what look like satin pyjamas here. Uh, she's wearing some slippers or booties and yeah really really nice detailing. You can just see the pearlescent there in the tie she's got around her neck. Similarly on the back there just a little bit of detailing for the contours. Now the facial expression is surprised to say the least and there is an alternate expression where she looks absolutely lost in mirth there. She looks like she's having a real good giggle. Um, really nice hair piece here. Uh, I think that's the same one we get with the Fantastic Beasts collectible minifigures series. Lots of waves going on and a really nice Queenie Goldstein minifigure. From one Goldstein to another, this is Tina, or Porpentina to give her her full name. She also attended Ilver Morning School of Witchcraft and Wizardry and was sorted into Thunderbird House. She later became an Aura, and if you remember the Fantastic Beast movie, she was dismissed from that position, but I believe she gets the position back, not that I want to give away any spoilers. Really nice outfit here, she's got the plain black pants on there, and then some really nice printing there on the torso. Uh, we've got a kind of grey jacket, would have been nice to have seen some of the printing down onto the pants there to give it some continuation. Uh, but we've got a 
really nice detailed printed blouse there. Uh, there are symbols on there. I can't really tell what those are, but I'm sure they have some significance in the uh, magical symbology. Also a little bit of metallic printing there for the locket around her neck. If we turn her over, just a little bit more printing on the back there for the outlines of the body. You can see the, uh, the way the jacket hugs her. And then really nice hair piece here. I love the way this kind of flows out towards the edges. Lots of texture there and take a look at that smiling expression. She does have a dual expression here, which is, uh, mm, she kind of looks um, reproachful. I think that's a word I'm gonna use for that. She does have some accessories. Of course, all of these guys come with a wand and she's holding a teapot, which comes with a lid. Uh, it will come off, yep. Not really a very good teapot lid element there. That's a pretty standard piece. But of course, this is the teapot where they catch the Okami. And that is the marvellous Porpentina Goldstein. This is Magizoologist and author of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Newton Artemist Fido Scamander, otherwise known as Newt, which is a lot easier to say. He was kind of inspired to become a Magizoologist because of his mother who bred hippogriffs. He has a pretty detailed backstory and lots of things are going to happen to him in the future, so I'm not going to give away any spoilers here. But Newt looks great in this outfit. He's got his kind of plain brown legs on there and then a printed torso piece showing his vest and shirt underneath a uh, little bit of metallic there for the I guess that's going to be a pocket watch which would be very 1920s he's got this kind of um, reddish brown wand and then this really cool ruffled hairpiece and a kind of smiling expression there with the uh, the laughter lines in there he looks great uh, turning him around he looks a little bit more pensive there perhaps he's trying to subdue a magical beast but really really nice Newt Scamander minifigure and I'm sure he's going to be very well received by Fantastic Beasts fans. And last but not least, we have the Muggle or Nomad Jacob Kowalski, which I'm probably pronouncing incorrectly. He is dressed here to assist Newt with the capture of the Erumpent. He's got these plain grey pants on, but then he's got this protective jacket which he wears in the movie, and then this helmet which looks great. I'm presuming this is some kind of Quidditch helmet or something of that nature. And he's got the umbrella as well to protect himself. I just love the way they've recreated the costume here. He looks great turning him over. Just a little bit more printing on the back there for the protective jacket and we can actually remove this helmet and replace it with hair i'm just going to turn this around that's his more everyday look and of course he loses the straps from the helmet if we put his hair on you can see he looks just like jacob kowalski and let's just take another look at that other face there yeah he looks very surprised and you can see the strap printing there which of course we don't have on his normal day-to-day -day face and that is a very nice Jacob Kowalski minifigure. So that was set number 75952, Newt's Case of Magical Creatures from LEGO Fantastic Beasts. In my honest opinion, this is LEGO at its most inventive. I love the way they created the opening up suitcase. And even though the selection of Magical Beasts was slightly truncated, the ones that we got were absolutely fantastic. As well as being a fun playset, this is a very innovative display piece. The colours are very eye-catching and overall it's just a great piece to add to your Wizarding World collection. So the big question is, is this good value for money? Considering the $50 price tag and the 694 piece part count, it's about right. But when you take into account the ingenuity of the build, the selection of beasts and the really good quality minifigures, I definitely think this is a set worth getting. The only two things I don't like about this set are the missing demi guys and the ropey bow truckle. I think Lego should have created a special element for that. Overall, however, this is a big thumbs up from me. I really hope you enjoyed this Lego Fantastic Beasts unboxing, speed build and review video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe for more awesome Lego content. I do have one more Wizarding World set review coming up. This arrived this morning and I'm super excited to get this built. It'll probably take me about a week to get this built and reviewed, but I hope you'll join me for a review of the Hogwarts castle at some point very soon. Thanks a million for checking out today's review. Stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.